Hello Freedom Mechanical customers. Today we're going to review the installation of a Bosch heat pump system, how to operate the new thermostat, a little bit of maintenance, and what to look for if you have some trouble with your new system. So let's have a look. So here we are at the new thermostat. We're going to have a look at all the options, how to run some things, and some recommendations on how to operate your new system to make your house as comfortable as possible. So this is your standby screen. Uh, anytime the thermostat kind of falls asleep, this is what you're gonna see. The backlight can be dimmed in the options if you don't wanna see it uh, you know, all day and night. You can go into the settings and turn that down. Um, our outside temperature setting currently is tied to an outside temperature sensor that's wired directly to the thermostat. If you access Wi-Fi on this, you may notice that this switches to uh, more of a weather-based uh, temperature. So that may change depending if you have it connected to Wi-Fi or not. So right now we have a white background with a gray and black uh, lettering. So that tells me that we have no mode selected between heat or cooling. So we'll just tap the screen here. The next screen we have is our user interface. So we have uh, our humidity here at the thermostat. We have our indoor temperature at the thermostat and we are currently off. So there's nothing running right now. So we're gonna tap the little menu button. The first option is mode. So we're gonna go ahead and turn whichever mode we want on. So if we select heat, that's going to be the heat pump. If we go to emergency heat, that is going to be the electric backup, or if you have, say, an oil furnace or gas furnace, that would be uh, what that is tied to at that time. And then, of course, cooling is your air conditioning. So we're gonna start with heat and see what this thing does. So we heard two little clicks there, and because our set point is higher than the current room temperature, we're going to activate the heat and bring things on. So as you can see, the colors kind of changed we tap the screen we can go back to the standby screen and the background is now orange or amber and so that tells us that the system is actually on and running when the system is in the heat mode but it is off the colors will invert your lettering will be orange your background will be white so just as a quick reference, as you're walking by the thermostat or something of that nature, you can see what's going on without having to touch anything. So at this point, the heat pump is going to warm up with a Bosch heat pump. Uh, a high efficiency air handler is going to allow the indoor coil to warm up to 90 degrees before the fan comes on. So right now that's what that's doing. Um, and of course we can you know, turn our temperature up and down here at the bottom. In this particular setting, we have about a two degree um, comfort offset. So if we turn the temperature up too high and it sees that for a certain amount of time, it's going to automatically bring in the backup heat to help catch up uh, to your set point. And then at that point, it would turn that back off and just run the heat pump. So if it's really cold outside and there's a big offset, or if you come home and really crank up the temperature, then you're going to notice that in a moment, it's gonna bring in that auxiliary backup heat. So we don't want that to happen. We're just gonna do some testing here. So at this point, we can work our way down the options. We're gonna to go to fan. The automatic mode is going to run the fan just when it's supposed to, and that's it, nothing else. The on will run the fan continuously, as it says. It's gonna run all day long until you switch it back to one of the other options. Now the circulate mode is nice for two-story houses or very long houses that have many rooms. Uh, so that's going to run the fan at periodic intervals throughout the day that help to mix the air through the house. So if you have a two-story house and your ductwork is set up properly, it will help to even out the temperatures from upstairs to downstairs. So very helpful option there. It will still run when it's supposed to, but it's gonna add a few extra runtime uh, intervals throughout the day. So we're gonna go back to auto for now. Priority, in this particular case, we don't have a sensor connected to this yet. 
uh, but if you connect an external sensor, you can decide which sensor to focus on. So if you have a second story and you want to focus on that second story, we can select that sensor in this screen here. If you select both options, the local thermostat and the sensor upstairs, then you can actually balance between the two or tell it to average, um, you know, the, the set point. Scheduling, we typically disable a schedule. We do not recommend a schedule. Anytime you're setting a schedule, you're actually going to lose efficiency overall because now everything in the house just changed temperature. Uh, in the winter, if you turn the temperature down when you leave for work, you're going to allow everything to cool off. Then when you come home, everything has to warm back up. So we actually do not recommend a schedule unless you're going away on vacation for an extended period of time, then it would be beneficial. But day-to-day uh, -day basis, if you're uh, Monday through Friday, 40 hour a week type of deal, then you're not really gonna wanna tinker with your temperature settings. So down here, devices and sensors, this is where we can add that extra sensor. We would push add and walk through the instructions there and it'll get you connected to your new sensor. Thermostat information just kind of gives us some information about this exact unit here, what the firmware date is and things of that nature. Now further up, we can access the Wi-Fi and the app uh, to control this from your phone. So you can actually uh, monitor but also control from your phone and that gives you the freedom to kind of check on the house when you're not at home, you know, if you're on vacation or something of that nature. Or if you, uh, you know, want to, you can actually set an alert that if your house gets too cold or too hot, um, it can send you an alert on your phone as well. So there's, there's uh, plenty of options in the app. And the app is nice because the interface looks very similar to that of what you see on the screen here. So the app is very nice. Security, you can set a lock uh, passcode for this if you have kids or something of that nature. Um, usually rentals and things of uh, that sort, people like to have a passcode on there. Uh, and further down the list are kind of things that we run into. You can set the date and time and a few things uh, in your preference uh, screen here, but then we have our installer options at the very bottom. So. At this point, we're still running in heat, so we have some airflow now. We can hear the air coming out of the vents, and uh, we're going to go ahead and move on down to the air handler at this point. So we're down at the air handler. Some people call it different things, uh, blower unit, indoor coil, evaporator. Um, we typically call it an air handler. It manages everything on the air side. So um, ductwork is all connected to this. We have an air filter here at the bottom drain system for when we're running in air conditioning so a few things to pay attention to it's really helpful to have a dry basement um, this is the air that you're breathing uh, going through the house so you want to make sure that your basement is not uh, moldy mildew uh, lots of moisture you know you want to be aware of those things so just pay attention to what's going on in your house so the biggest thing that you're going to be involved with is changing the air filter uh, of your system. So the air filter is located down here. The air filters have a directional flow to them, so that's important. We typically write the airflow direction right on the unit so that you know. But if you're not sure, just look at where your drain is, look at the layout of the ductwork. If you know that some of the runs blow air out in you know, in this corner or that corner, then you can trace it back. So if that is coming out of the top, then your return is coming in this direction. There are inverted units out there. I'm not sure why people would install that in a basement, but they are out there. This particular application, we're bringing the air in this side and coming up through this way. So you have to be aware of that for the sake of your air filter. For the most part, it's not a big deal as long as you're changing them on a regular basis. The reason that that would be important would be because the air filters have a metal mesh on one side and not so much on the other. This particular one has a lot of cardboard crosses. So the issue is that some people forget their air filter and it becomes clogged. So it starts to push 
up in the center and it can tear through and then you end up with a clogged coil or other issues that way. So that's why they're directional. They put that metal mesh in there to prevent issues uh, if somebody forgets to change their air filter. So. One of the biggest questions we get with a new system is how often should I change my air filter? The biggest thing to remember is that every house is different. Your house is different from your neighbor's house. They may have five or six dogs and four kids, whereas if you're by yourself, there's a lot less traffic, a lot less hair and dust and dirt coming into the house. So every house is different. What I recommend is to check it on a monthly basis, see where it's at and go from there. If it's not dirty after a month, put it back in. No use in wasting the filter. Check it after another month. So at two, three, four months, you might not notice a whole lot or you might notice that it's really dirty after a month. There are plenty of people out there that have pets. I have two dogs and two kids at home. And so the big thing is, uh, you know, it, it comes down to your house versus somebody else's uh, to answer that question. If it's been six months, definitely just throw it away. Germ accumulation in that air filter, it's time to just swap it out for a fresh one and uh, make sure that there's nothing hiding in your filter. So at this, you know, at that point, at least every six months, if not much sooner, depending on how much dust and dirt is on them. I like the blue ones because you can really see a difference in color or something like that. The white ones are nice as well. Um, so just pay attention is the big thing. Now we typically provide a box or at least the option to get a box uh, of air filters with a new system. What we typically provide is a MERV 10. So a lot of these filters have a MERV rating hiding on them. If you're buying them on Amazon or something like that, you want to check your MERV rating. A MERV, I think it's five or something like that. You can see straight through them. They're basically a, a fiberglass mesh. Um, so they're not going to provide a whole lot of protection for this brand new coil. You have to remember that coil is very uh, fine as far as the passages in there. So we want to pay attention to what we're putting in the unit. We typically do not use anything lower than a MERV 10, which is M-E-R-V. 10 and so that's the efficiency and effectiveness of the air filter itself if you go too light you're going to clog the coil if you go too aggressive you can also slow down the airflow too much in your system this particular unit uh, is oversized for the heating capability so we have tons of blower there to help pull through um, but MERV 10 is more than enough unless you run into a particular situation where you have allergies or you're noticing uh, dust is still flying through the house. So then you might want to up to an 11 or a 13 or higher. So um, that's the number that we pay attention to as far as what you're putting in here. So we typically can get you better prices uh, from our supplier than you can buy online or at Walmart or Lowe's or something like that. So next to the air handler, this particular air handler, there is a condensation system. So out of the coil, we're going to drain the condensation that's collected during the air conditioning cycle, and it's going to run down into a condensation pump. At that point, it's gonna pump outside. The reason we would use a pump is if there's not a local drain uh, real close to the unit, you don't want pipes running across your floor, especially rigid uh, PVC or anything like that. So we put a pump on. I don't prefer the pumps, but they are very effective, uh, especially to keep the floor space clean. Um, so very, very nice option there. Um, this system, as an air conditioning system, needs to have a trap. So this is a trap, and that's something that we pay attention to. I have a small vent hole here, which is very important to allow this system to drain properly uh, with the condensate pump, so we gotta pay attention to that. Something as a homeowner that you need to know, though, is each season that passes, the heating system uh, may pull enough air through this in the winter to dry it out. Um, so when you switch to air conditioning, make sure there's a little bit of water in here, at least up above the bottom bubble there, 
to make sure that this is going to drain properly for you the first cycle of the air conditioning season is very important so if this is dry it might hold water in the unit and if it runs a long cycle on that first cycle it can overflow and run down into the bottom return box of the air handler so we want to pay attention to that when you go to start it up for the first time in the uh, spring or summer just flip the cap open here now not everybody has one we install these easy traps they they are very nice we can just flip this cap open dump a little bit of water in it and you're good to go for that first season and maybe even longer depending on the environment if this is up in an attic or something it's going to be more prone to dry that trap out um but just pay attention to the trap. You can also see if there's any accumulation of dirt in there. If you're getting a lot of accumulation, we may have to go to a more aggressive filter or change the filter more frequently. So something to pay attention to there. Up higher at your air handler, this particular heat pump has electric backup in it. So we do have breakers right here at the unit. They're technically not your typical breaker style uh, of shut off so they're not supposed to trip if there's something wrong uh, they're mainly for serviceability so we can turn the unit on and off there are breakers at your main electric panel that are for this with this particular unit being a 15 kilowatt it has two separate breakers in the panel so if you you for some reason are opening this up make sure you turn both breakers off uh, because there could still be power in this unit so two breakers here just for shut off sake and two uh, breakers in the electric panel for shut off and safety sake if something gets overloaded one question that we get a lot of is how often should i have you come back to service this or maintain the system i am a believer in honest work for honest pay i'm not going to tell you to call me every single year and spend three hours tearing this thing apart and cleaning every nook and cranny if you keep after the air filter and you're paying attention outside once every two years is more than enough so don't waste your money hiring a service company to come in every year to just change an air filter and charge you 150 bucks that's not correct so it really comes down to your system and you know just like changing the air filter every house is different every system is different but i typically recommend two to three years uh depending on use and uh, you know environment uh, things like that so just pay attention to your system so at freedom mechanical for our bosch heat pumps we typically install a voltage monitor and surge protector on our newer systems this is something we're starting to do to help protect the homeowner's investment uh, once the warranty is gone we want to make sure that that expensive control board is covered so as you can see we have 239 volts right now i have some limits set on this so this is something you'd want to pay attention to if for some reason your system is not running on its own or just the indoor portion is running then come down and check to see if there's an alarm on here that might be triggered by high voltage or low voltage um, fluctuations in voltage and then we also have our surge protector here in case there's any major spikes so here we are at the outdoor unit we call this the condenser or the outdoor heat pump there's many words for it but that's typically what we refer to it as and as you can see here is the drain hose for the condensation pump that's inside over here is a disconnect in case we need to kill power to the unit uh, from right here at the service point so we prefer if you can to just keep this area clear beside the unit on the line side so that we can access it we would ask that you don't plant any flowers here or do anything fancy landscaping wise um, but at this point uh, what you can look for as a homeowner is just pay attention to the grass trimmings try not to blow them into the unit uh, if you're running a lawnmower blow it outward at least three or four laps you know if you're going around your house in circles so um, what we're paying attention to is how dirty the coil is in here for efficiency sake um, 
you know, a lot of people ask about covering the unit for the sake of the leaves. This is a heat pump, so it runs year round in heating and air conditioning. Um, you know, so there's lots of trees, something to pay attention to. But for the most part, this has a fan that is blowing upwards and will keep the debris uh, out of the unit. Um, if you feel the need to wash this unit, do not use a pressure washer. Simply turn the unit off at the thermostat and use a garden hose. Just kind of give it a light uh, rub just on the exterior panels. Don't try to rub the coils or anything. Just use a garden hose and um, that would be pretty much the whole maintenance on this thing. During the winter, the unit will freeze up. That uh, it is very common, so that's expected. The unit will go into a defrost cycle, which is essentially air conditioning, and that will melt any ice off of there. So um, that's why we have a riser base. You will get some ice underneath here. The noise will be alarming at first. If you haven't heard it before, it's kind of like a little bit of a growling and a push. So um, just something to be aware of that that is normal for a heat pump. And um, that happens many times throughout the winter. So during that cycle of operation, uh, freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing, the unit does uh, clean the coil for the most part um, through the winter. So it's actually pretty helpful that it goes into that defrost cycle. So when we engage the heat mode in our Bosch heat pump, every Bosch heat pump does the same thing regardless of which tier you bought. So the Bosch heat pump in the heat mode, when you call for heat at the thermostat, this has a small delay, but then it's gonna come on with just the fan. That's gonna happen for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. Then it's gonna run air conditioning. It's going to do a, a predetermined uh, defrost cycle before it ever generates heat. So between fan and defrost, uh, before every single cycle, it's gonna run for about a minute and a half, uh, sometimes two minutes uh, if you're timing it or something of that nature. So for two minutes, you're technically not going to get heat out of this unit. However, that is very important because it's making sure that this unit is completely melted off before it ever starts in the heat cycle. Um, so once that time is up, it's gonna switch over to heat. You're, you might hear that noise, the psh, and switch over to heat. Then it's going to run in the heat cycle and slowly ramp up as it sees the demand for your heat. So that's a question we get a lot of time is why am I not getting heat immediately with the thermostat? It's because of this uh, defrost delay on startup. Up at the thermostat, I mentioned about a delay for the heat to come on. So not everybody has that on their system. This is a Bosch 2.0 air handler. It's nothing that just hit the market or anything like that. They've changed some names for it, but it is a more efficient uh, variable speed air handler. And so it has a little bit of a smart computer to it. And what that allows it to do is control when the fan comes on for heat sake when the thermostat calls for heat if it brings the blower on immediately the outdoor unit has not built up enough heat yet in the coil to actually make it feel warm so you're going to get a shot of cold air so this 2.0 air handler has the ability to hold off the blower until it sees 90 degrees in here on a sensor the entry level uh, light air handler does not have that. So when you call for heat at the thermostat, unless your technician has installed an aftermarket uh, control, you're gonna have a shot of cold air for the first three minutes uh, before that outdoor heat pump begins to rev up. So that's something to pay attention to. Um, we believe in trying to make the house as comfortable as possible. The system as comfortable as possible for you. So um, on this 2.0, that is already integrated into that system. At Freedom Mechanical, we typically register the warranty for you for this system. Uh, if you have any questions on your system, you know how to get a hold of us. Um, we will be glad to make a site visit and you know give you a full explanation of anything uh, that you need explained, or if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of us. Um, we love our customers. We'll be glad to come back. 
I want to thank you for your time and helping us out uh, to stay in business and uh, serve this great community here where we live. So if you have any questions at all, give us a call. Have a great day.